Today, I'm going to show you how to remove logos and branding from your images in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning fun. And in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to remove logos and branding from any image in Photoshop. Now, this is incredibly helpful for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one of those reasons being, if you wanna post your images on a stock image website, they can't have logos or brands on the actual images, so you're gonna have to remove them. So that's one big reason why you're gonna benefit from today's episode. Another great reason you may want to remove logos and branding is if you're photographing images for a client and those images contained other brands, you want to remove those before sending your client because obviously they don't want any competing brands in their images. So we're going to show you a few different methods for doing this using the spot healing brush tool, the clone stamp tool, the brush tool, and some selection tools. All right, guys, we got a great episode. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our image for today. It's a beautiful photo. We've just got a little bit of distracting things going on. First of all, we have a tractor supply company logo right here on the truck. And we've got a uh, custom, whatever the name of this truck is here. Now in this example, uh, a lot of the time you would actually wanna like leave the truck logo itself. Uh, but in this example, we're gonna show you how to remove both this logo and the one here in the back. So let's go ahead and start off with our front logo. Now this one's gonna be pretty easy and the reason is is because most of this is just surrounded by white. So if you're in a situation where you've got a logo pretty much just surrounded by white or any other like solid color, it's gonna be pretty easy. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. Okay, and I'm gonna use my spot healing brush tool. So let's go to our healing brush tool and make sure you're on your spot healing brush tool. Now. When you're on your spot healing brush tool, you want to make sure your type is set to content aware. You want to make sure you're set to sample all layers as well. This way it's going to sample everything that's on this layer and the layers below it. Okay, now with our spot healing brush tool, all I have to do is simply paint right over my logo. There we go. You can see very, very easy to do. Just paint over your logo just like that. And it's gone. Wow, that was incredibly easy. Yep, it pretty much is that easy. Uh, basically, this tool is gonna find areas around your logo that are similar and fill them in for you. So you'll notice I didn't go all the way to my arm. I'm gonna do these in separate, uh, separate sections. And the reason is, whenever we come to an outline or a border or something like that, that's really where we're gonna start encountering some problems. Now, with the Spot Healing Brush tool, we do have content aware. So it will know that there is an edge here for the arm. Okay, and it's gonna do its best job to try to like uh, uh, compensate for that edge as well. So let's go ahead and see how it does. Painting in here, I'm just gonna go right up to the arm, all right, and paint away my logo and let go. And you can see it did a pretty good job actually. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this tool. Um, the, this is one of the big things Adobe continues to update is their content aware uh, features in Photoshop. And uh, it, it really did a good job. Now you may notice that um, it didn't like really extend my shadow, okay? So you can see the shadow looks like perfectly natural, natural, natural here. And then like right over there, it's like, eh, it kind of looks a little bit weird. So in this case, we're just gonna like help it out a little bit. We're gonna use the clone stamp tool and bridge that gap. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. We're gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool, or you can simply click right here. And again, here you wanna make sure that your sample is set to current and below. That's gonna allow you to do this on a new layer. If you did this on just current layer, which is what it defaults to, it's not gonna let you do anything because there's not actually anything on this layer, right? So you can see it's just everything I do is blank. So just be sure you're set to current and below or all layers. I'm gonna stick with current and below. Now, zooming in here, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click here as my sample point. And then wherever I paint, it's just gonna kind of replicate exactly where I sampled. Now I've got a little preview here, okay? So you can see if I were to hold Alt or Option and sample there, I'm gonna have a preview of wherever I sample, okay? Which can be really helpful, especially when I need to like line up an area from a person's arm. Now if you're not seeing that preview, all you have to do is go to Window and down to Clone Source, and then make sure you click on this little button that says Show overlay. Okay, so you can see if I don't have that clicked, I'm not going to see the preview. If I do have that clicked, I'm going to see the preview. And that really is very helpful. So again, let's hold Alt or Option. I'm going to sample right here. 
and just paint just a little bit right here and that's just gonna extend my shadow up and get, make it look just a little bit more natural. All right, great. And if you do have any other issues with your uh, spot healing brush tool, just making any adjustments that don't look 100% real, you can always come back and fix them. So you can see, I just extended the shadow a little bit more, just like that, and it really does make that transition look nice, smooth, and even. Okay, so there's our first example for removing a logo or branding. So we got the majority of it with our spot healing brush tool, and then we came in with the clone stamp tool and fixed up that border. All right, we've got one more logo to remove, and we're gonna be using some different techniques here, and I'll show you why. So jumping back in, let's go ahead and create a new layer, and I'm gonna zoom in. Let's just try to use our spot healing brush tool. So I'm gonna try using this tool. We're gonna just paint right over here, like pretty much remove all of our logo. There we go, and let's let go. Ooh, not so much, right? It's like, okay, the tool's pretty good, but it's not perfect. Uh, the reason is it doesn't really know that there's an edge right here, you know, and it doesn't really know that there's an edge right here. So again, this tool works really great if it's like, if you're painting in an area that's just surrounded, like um, for instance, if this sticker was smaller and it was like right here, it would totally work. But when you have like edges and things like that, it's not gonna work as well. So let's just find you another, like here it's gonna work well let go, you know, that's not a logo obviously, but you can see it was, this is all surrounded by the exact same color and texture. So I can just paint over something like that. So if your logo or brand is like basically in that type of format, your spot healing brush tool is gonna work really well. Now in this case, uh, the spot healing brush tool, as you just saw, didn't work very well. So what I'm gonna do is first make a selection around this area. And you can make selections in many, many different ways. I'm going to show you a very easy way using just the lasso tool. So we're going to be grabbing our lasso tool to make a selection. Now your normal lasso tool, which is right here, will allow you to make curves and shapes and basically anywhere you put your cursor, it's going to turn that into a selection. Now in this case, we have straight edges here, right? We have an edge here on the bottom and an edge here on the left that we need to keep defined, right? Because we need a, the difference between this surface and that surface there's a color difference there, right? So we need to keep that difference. So I'm gonna make sure we select our polygonal lasso tool, which is gonna create straight lines. And in this case, we're just gonna click right over here. There we go, drag this over to the left-hand side. There we go, and straight up, and come back here in this direction and kind of finish that up. There we go. So now we have a selection around basically what is gonna be this part of the truck. Now I know the sticker's a little bit on the, on the edge there, that's okay, we're gonna take care of that, it's really easy. Okay, so we basically have our selection now. The only problem is the edge of this selection is really hard, it's a very hard edge, and that it's not gonna match up with what's going on in our image. We need to soften this edge up a little bit. So to do that, we're gonna go up here to select, and then down to, to select and mask. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, it's gonna be called, be called Refine Edge. So let's go to Selected Mask, and here you can see a few different views of your selection. So you could see it on you know, black and white, on white, on your layers, on black, and basically just a bunch of different views. Now we're gonna use the overlay view here. Okay, so it just gives me a little bit of a visual preview of what my selection edge looks like. And your opacity can change here. So if your opacity, your opacity is 100, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see how this compares to the rest of your photo. So we're just gonna bring our opacity down just a little bit. There we go. So now, basically just keep in mind, this is a visual indicator of what our selection looks like. Okay, so our different views here, they don't change the selection at all. They just like, they get, allow us to see the selection in a few different ways. Okay, let's go back to the overlay here. So the next thing I wanna do is, remember, we need to soften the edge up a little bit, right? So I'm gonna to go to my feathering and bring this up just a little bit, okay? Until we have a soft edge and you can see it's gonna start to match what's going on in my image just a little bit better, okay? So we're gonna go to 1.5 pixels and hit okay. Now, in this case, we're actually supplying you with this exact image. You can download it on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. So in this case, you can actually just enter 1.5 pixels and you'll be good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit okay. There we go, and now our selection has a little bit of feathering 
to the edge. In other words, it's a little bit on the softer side. So what we're gonna do now is create a new layer and I'm gonna fill in this selection with a color. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. You could use your clone stamp tool if you want. In this case, it's basically all just the same color. So I'm gonna use my brush tool. We're gonna sample the color of the truck and then I'm just gonna paint right over there. And you're gonna see how easy it is to use the brush tool for this type of situation. So now our sample is in place. It has the feathering that we want. I'm on a new layer here. So I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool. There we go. Let's make our brush a little bit larger and I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and Sample right here as my color. So as I sample here, I can just start painting. Now, the only place it's gonna let me paint is inside of the selection. You can see it's up, I try to paint all over the place. It's only gonna let me paint inside of the selection there. Okay, there we go. Now, if the little marching ants there are kind of getting in your way, like if you can't see what you're doing, hit Control or Command H for Hide. Okay, and that's gonna temporarily hide. Now, if, you're, if this is the first time you've hit Control or Command H, it may ask you if you wanna hide Photoshop or hide extras, be sure to click on hide extras. So jumping back in, we're just gonna use our brush tool and sample this color and paint basically right up here to our edge. So you may wanna use your brush tool and sample a couple times just to make sure you're kind of blending in every, everything. And you could use your clone stamp tool in the same exact situation as well. Basically, you just wanna make sure you maintain your selection all right, now the selection here, like on the top and things like that, that's not important. Where your selection is really important is your side right here and the bottom, okay? There we go. Now, if your selection is not in the exact right place, and I think I can move my selection down just a little bit, right? Because it's, it looks good, but this is just, you can see it's just a tiny bit thicker here than over there. So that's not a big deal. All you have to do is hit Control or Command H again to review, uh, to bring up your selection once more, okay? Then I'm gonna click on one of my selection tools and it can be any selection tool. You can click on your marquee tool or your lasso tool. And then you can just use your up and down arrows to kind of move your selection. So you can see, I can just move this selection around if I need. Let's just undo that. I don't need to move it that much. I'm just gonna hit down one time. There we go. And that's just moved my selection a little bit. And now I'm gonna go back to my brush tool, hit Control or Command H again to hide that. And we can see I can just paint this in we have a nice feathered edge, but now it's just gonna really blend in with the rest of the truck. Okay, so I'm just throwing in some extra little tidbits here to help you guys. If you didn't make a perfect selection the first time, uh, you can always just move that selection. It's not hard to do. So that took care of this area, and this looks great. Like the, the bottom, that line there looks really nice and clean. Okay, over here on the left side, it looks good as far as this surface is concerned, but on this surface, we can still we see a little bit like a little bit of our uh, logo kind of is left there, right? So all I have to do is inverse my selection. And this is what's great about selections is if you have you know, this area selected, you can inverse it and it's gonna select everything else. So this will allow you to like basically edit two parts of the same selection. So jumping back in, we're gonna go up here to select and then down to inverse. Okay, so remember before we had just this area was selected, meaning we could only affect just that area. Now, let's just create a new layer and show you guys here. Everything else is selected. So the only area that I can affect is everything else. It's now not going to let me affect what's inside of that little area, which is exactly what we want. So zooming back in, <laughs> I know it's a lot here, guys, but if you can get this, then you're, you're gonna be good to go with when it comes to selections. So zooming back in, again, remember, we can't paint inside of that selection. We can only paint outside. I'm gonna hit Control or Command H again, and we're gonna use our brush tool and sample this color, and now I'm gonna paint from this side, okay? We're gonna paint from this side, sampling our color here. There we go, and you're gonna see, basically I'm able to completely remove my logo from this side as well, because I'm using the exact same edge, right? Like this edge is the same edge that we used on the other side, and I'm just like really making it nice and clean here. So I don't have to worry about you know, if I grab this color, I, I'm not even like trying to be careful as I paint here because I don't, I don't have to be because I literally cannot paint right over here. So you can see, I'll just hit Control or Command H again. As long as this selection is active, I cannot paint inside of here. So it just gives me that little area to paint that, that edge in there, which I think is incredibly cool. So let's go ahead and turn those layers off. So our first layer here, we made a selection around this logo here. Again, and I wanted to make sure I had a very nice edge here on the left and here on the bottom. So we just painted that in with a brush tool. 
And then I inverse the selection and we did basically the other side of this line. Okay, on a new layer and just painted that in as well. So let's go ahead and zoom out and basically we have a perfect, there we go, let's just make those visible. We have a perfect edge right there and on the bottom and our logo is completely gone. All right guys, so cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before and after. Here's our before and the after. Okay guys, that's all there is to removing logos and branding within Photoshop. If you wanna do this on your own, just follow these key steps. So if your logo or brand is surrounded by the same color like it was for the first logo on this truck, this is a perfect opportunity for the spot healing brush tool. Create a new layer, make sure you're set to sample all layers and simply paint over your logo and it's going to disappear. If you find you need to do a little bit of cleanup areas around the edges, this is a great time to use the clone stamp tool. Make sure you're set to sample all layers or current and below, create a new layer and go ahead and copy from one part of an image to another to make sure your edges are perfect. Now, if your logo is in an area that's a little bit more complicated, this is a time when you may wanna make selections. In this case, we use the polygonal lasso tool to make a selection that encompasses the bottom and the left edge of our truck. By default, the edge of the selection is gonna be a very hard edge, which is not gonna look super natural in a photo like this. So we wanted to soften that up. So we went to select and down to select and mask. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, it's gonna say refine edge. All you have to do is bring your feathering up a little bit and make sure you can see it in your preview. Then we had our selection in place. We just used the brush tool to sample the color and paint in that area. Then we inversed our selection, painting from the outside in, making a perfect removal of our logo in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching today's episode, guys. I hope this helped out and now you know how to remove logos and brands. So anytime a client says, can we remove that in post? You can say, yes, I can. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Speaking of removing branding, you may notice I'm not wearing a Flurn shirt in this episode. This was actually done completely digital. In real life, I am wearing a Flurn shirt. Not really. I feel like I need to take my pants off. It's so hot with this sweater on. They call me Sweatmaster Nace. I'm the Sweatmaster. Whew.